So, but I am reading the question for you. Uh, it is ratios analysis. The following balances occur in Del Boy's books of accounts at 30th September 2006. Now, the data is given. Purchases is there. Then we have sales. Stock is the previous name, earlier name for inventory. We have opening inventory worth 24,000 fixed asset. Uh, as now described as non-current assets, debtors are no, now known as trade receivables. Although it's an old question, as the terminologies have been changed. We have creditors known as trade payables. Then we have a bank debit. If a bank is on debit, then it is a current asset. And if it's a credit, then it's a current liability. We have long-term loan 10%. And even if the long-term is not given, we would assume that loan is always long-term unless it is stated as short-term loan or the date of next year is given. Uh, and in that case, the loan would be a current liability. We have interest paid. We have paid some of the interest and the other uh, amount that has not yet been paid would be termed as accrued interest other payables operating costs are there drawing is there capital we need to find out and we have closing inventory stock at 30th september is closing inventory and we have already been provided an income statement previous name for income statement was trading and profit and loss account what we need to do we need to prepare balance sheet balance sheet is the earlier name for statement of financial position okay so what we need to do, we need to draw up a SOFP statement of financial position. Let's see how would we make it. SOFP is based on accounting equation. As you must be aware, accounting equation says that as assets always equal capital and liabilities. Now there are two types of assets. One are non-current and another one is our current assets. Now we are being provided with which uh, assets, fixed asset termed as non-current assets. Now it is 77 and in the above it's written as three zeros, thousands of dollars. So this means this is 77 thousands of dollars. So I'm writing all three zeros, 77 thousand after non-current asset would be current assets. And in current assets, we usually write inventory first. We have closing inventory. Uh, we take closing inventory here. Why? Because we are making SFP at the end of the year. After inventory comes Trade receivables, previously known as debtors. Trade receivables are our customers whom we have sell the goods on credit. Uh, there is no irrecoverable debt or doubtful debt. So therefore, I am writing the amount uh, as it is. After uh, trade receivables, we may have other receivables which are not here present. Then we have bank and cash. We have bank balance of 15,000 debit. We just need to write the bank balance here. So if we add all of the current assets, non-current plus current assets, then we would have total assets. Now there's no problem in the asset side. After asset comes capital and liabilities. First part is easy for that. And in the second part, it is also easy, but there are many ratios to calculate in this uh, question. Uh, how do we write a capital and liability? First of all, there is a capital. In the sole trader, how we calculate capital? First of all, we have opening capital. Now, is there opening capital given? Opening capital is not given already. So therefore, we need to find the opening capital. Or we can skip this capital part. Then we can move forward to add profit for the year. So are we already being provided with the profit figure? Yes. As you can see, we have an income statement being given. And in the last value is net profit, also known as profit for the year for now. So it is profit for the year. It needs to be added Why that profit increases our capital. Then we have drawings. Drawings would reduce our capital. So how much drawing we do we have? Uh, we already have drawings. And this is the figure for drawing that is 20,000. So here comes all of the drawing, whether it is cash drawing or drawing through check or goods drawing all of the drawings should come in so if we do not have an opening capital so therefore we do not have closing capital either so we can move forward after assets and capital there come liabilities first of all we have non-current liabilities and then current liabilities so non-current liabilities are long-term loan here even if it's the examiner doesn't mention long-term loan uh, and if no date is given we would assume that loan is always non-current or long-term so we would write 10% loan after loan there comes current liability and we are supposed to write the heading current liability in current liability we are uh, 
to write trade payables uh, previously known as creditors so we are being provided creditors value trade payable is 33,000 after trade payables there can come other payables other payable we have accrued expenses or prepaid income so are there any accrued expenses let us see uh, the interest rate is 10 percent on the loan that is 20,000 if we apply 10 percent on 20,000 uh, there would be an interest of 2000 per year and out of that 2000 interest per annum we have only paid how much 1000 so therefore half of the interest has been paid and the other half is still outstanding that is owing so we need to write loan interest out of the 2000 interest 1000 have already been paid so therefore the remaining 1000 would be accrued so there are current liabilities we need to add up the current liabilities both of them so the total of current liabilities are 34,000. So what we need to do finally, we need to add up both of the sides. But the thing is that we are uh, unaware of the capital. So we cannot balance this equation right now, but you may be aware of the accounting equation. And accounting equation says that assets minus liability is equal to capital. And the plus equation that we have is assets is equal to capital plus liabilities. So what we need to do, if we deduct all of the liabilities from the total of assets, then we can get the capital value. Now, as you can see better, that total assets are at the end of the year. And so the liabilities are also at the end of the year. So if we deduct closing assets, uh, closing liabilities from closing assets, we are left with closing capital. Okay. So what I need to do, I need to deduct uh, total liabilities from this total of assets. And if I do so, I am left with the capital value and the capital must also be closing. Why? Because if the assets are closing and the liabilities are also closing, then the capital must also be closing. And if you have already found out the closing capital, can we find the opening capital? Yes, we would start with the closing capital and the drawing that was previously being deducted would be now added and the profit that is usually added would now be subtracted. So 81,000 plus 20,000 minus 10,000 we can have the opening capital. So this is how you complete the accounting equation if other information is not given. So this is the first part that is how to make an SOFP with the available data. So we have some ratios that we need to find out in this question. In other parts that is part B we need to calculate all the ratios to two decimal places. First of all it is net profit ratio. Net profit ratio is also known as net profit margin or profit for the year margin. What is the formula for net profit margin? Net profit margin formula is net profit that is profit for the year. And we need to divide it with what? With sales or revenue. Multiply by 100. This is the formula for profit margin or net profit margin. So are we already being provided with net profit? Yes. As you can see here, net profit is 10,000. And this net profit is always after interest. Okay. As you can see, interest has already been subtracted. So this is the final profit that is 10,000. And what is the revenue figure that is sales? But a revenue figure is 240,000. So what we need to do, we need to divide the 10,000 net profit with the revenue figure that is 240,000. And we need to multiply it by 100. So this is the net profit margin figure. Net profit margin here is 4.17%. Now net profit margin more the merrier. Uh, the more uh, ratio we have, it's good for the business. This basically tells us that how much net profit we are generating from the sales. Okay, so net profit margin here is 4%. This means uh, if we uh, sell goods worth $100, we are only earning a profit of $4.17. Okay, it's quite low, but we cannot say it's low because we are not yet being provided with uh, ratios of some other businesses or maybe the previous years so although it seems low but we cannot comment on that uh, once we get to know the ratios of other businesses and the previous years after net profit margin we need to find the ratio as current ratio now what is the formula for current ratio current ratio is also known as working capital ratio okay current ratio or working capital ratio the formula is current assets upon current liability Basically, the current ratio tells us the relationship between current assets and current liability that how much current assets do we have for each dollar of current liability. 
Now, how many current assets do we have in this question? Let's see. We have basically three current assets and which are inventory, trade receivables and bank. As we can see, the total of current assets is how much? It is 58,000 and the total of current liabilities is how much? 34,000. So the formula would be current assets 58,000 divided by current liability 34,000. Okay, 58 upon 34,000. This is formula for current ratio or working capital ratio. Now the answer that we are going to get here is 1.71 as for uh, as far as two decimal places are concerned. Now we cannot write this as an answer. Instead, we need to write ratio one after that. What is this ratio one? Ratio one is something that is fixed and we need to add it in the current ratio and one of the other ratios uh, known as quick ratio. Now, what does this ratio one represent? The ratio one represent the denominator that is current liability. This means better for each dollar of current assets, we have current liabilities of $1.71. Okay, current assets are $1.71 as compared to current liabilities. Okay, current ratios are 1.7 times as compared to current liabilities. So the question here arises, sir, what is the ideal current ratio? Ideally, the current ratio should be two ratio one. Okay, what does this mean? This means our current assets should be twice as compared to current liabilities. This is the ideal ratio. This is the best a business can get. And maximum ratio should be three ratio one. So the question here arises, why there is a maximum limit? Why can't we have 10 ratio one? Uh, the answer for that is the current ratio should be within this range. If we have current assets of more than three as compared to current liability, so therefore the resources are unutilized. Okay, resources are being wasted. Okay, so the current ratio should not be excessive. If it's more than three, so we would say that the current ratios are idle. Okay, ideal is different and idle is different. Idle means ideally. The resources are redundant and resources are ones that are not used in the business. So the current ratio should not be more than three. And if it's more than three, then we would say that resources are being wasted and resources are not being efficiently used in the business. And minimum ratio should be 1.5 ratio one as far as current ratio is concerned. So the current ratio limit is from 1.5 to three. And the ideal ratio is two. After current ratio, we have another ratio such, uh, with the name of acid test ratio. Acid test ratio, also known as quick ratio or liquid ratio. Now, what is this? The formula for quick ratio or acid test ratio, liquid ratio is current assets minus closing inventory upon current liabilities. Okay, this is the formula: current assets minus closing inventory upon current liabilities now uh, current assets we have already find out how much current assets are there the now current assets are in total 58000 so what we need to do we need to take current asset first and then we deduct need to deduct the closing inventory so if i deduct the closing inventory value that is 12000 from the total of current assets we are left with what we are left with quick assets now what are quick assets better quick assets are assets that can quickly be converted into cash okay quick assets are assets that can quickly be converted into cash and there are two quick assets here one is trade receivables and one is bank so there are two methods to do this uh, first is uh, we would uh, take the total of current assets that is 58000 and we need to deduct inventory from that and secondly if you want to deduct the inventory second method is that uh, uh, do not add the inventory in the first place Okay, just add the, the other current assets other than inventory that is trade receivables and bank. Now that answer would be the same if we deduct uh, 12,000 from 58, we are left with 46,000. Uh, or if we add trade receivables and bank, this would also be 46,000. So we need to take uh, in the numerator quick assets such as 48,000, 46,000. And in the denominator is the same that is current liability that are 34,000. Okay. So current assets is 58,000 and current liabilities is 34,000. Sorry.
quick assets is 46,000. Quick assets are 46,000. And current liability is again the same 34,000. Now the answer for that is 1.35, but we would not uh, finish off with 1.35. We need to add one more thing such as uh, ratio one. So in only two ratios, uh, that is current ratio and quick ratio, we take uh, ratio one, okay? So what does this mean? This means for each dollar of current liability, we have quick assets of $1.35. So the question arises, sir, what is the ideal ratio as far as quick ratio is concerned? Ideally, it should be one ratio one and maximum it should be one plus that is two ratio one. For current ratio, if ideal is two ratio one, maximum should be three. And for quick ratio, if the ideal is one, maximum should be two. We need to just uh, add one plus. And the minimum ratio for quick ratio would be 0.7. Okay, you need to remember this minimum, ideal and maximum. Now in the next uh, ratio that we need to find, we need to find inventory turnover. And inventory turnover is usually can calculated in terms of times. Okay, inventory turnover is times. And the formula for inventory turnover would be cost of sales upon average inventory. Now cost of sales is already given in the question. Let's see opening at purchase less closing would be cost of sale now the quest cost of sale figure in this question is 166000 and how to calculate average inventory better the formula for average inventory is opening plus closing divided by 2 okay whenever we need to find the average of two figures uh, we would uh, add opening and closing and we need to divide it by 2 now the opening inventory is already given here and opening inventory is given as opening stock that is 24,000 and closing is 12,000. So we need to add up both opening and closing and we need to divide it with the two. So average inventory is 18,000. So if we are selling 166,000 worth of inventory in any particular year and in this year and we have average inventory of 18,000. So how many times we have sell the average inventory uh, 166 divided by 18 the answer would be 9.22 times. So therefore, it means we are selling the inventory nine times in uh, this particular year. So the more times we sell the inventory, the better it is for the business. Okay. In this case, the average inventory is how much? It is nine times. So average inventory can also be calculated as uh, inventory turnover uh, in days. Sorry, inventory turnover can also be calculated in terms of days. Usually it is calculated as times, but if the examiner says, to calculate inventory turnover in terms of days or inventory holding period it is also known as inventory holding period how can we find this the formula was cost of sales or upon average initially what we need to do we need to inverse this formula it would be average inventory upon cost of sales and we need to multiply it with what with 365 because there are 365 days in any particular year so average inventory how much average inventory do we have if we have 18000 and cost of sale is how much it is 166,000 multiplied by 365 okay so inventory turnover in terms of days is how much it is 40 days inventory turnover in terms of days is 40 days so what does this mean this means it takes us on average 40 days to sell the entire inventory okay if inventory is being sold in 40 days and there are 365 days in any particular year so therefore we usually sell uh, nine times inventory in any particular year. So if we are talking about times, uh, the more times it is, the better it is for the business. And if we are talking in terms of days, less days inventory turnover period it is, it is better for the business. So if the inventory days goes up, then obviously the time would goes down. And if the days uh, would go down, so the, uh, the faster uh, we are selling the inventory, Okay, the lower days where the inventory have we have on our shelves, the more times we would be able to sell inventory in any particular year. And there is a shortcut way to also convert from days to times. And that is, uh, we just uh, need to divide uh, it with 365. If we are dividing uh, 9.22 with 365, we are left with days. And if we divide, uh, days with the 365 we can have the times value okay in numerator we would always keep 365 if we divide it with times we are left with days and if we divide 365 with 40 days we can have the times okay 
then we have roe uh, in this question return on equity what is the formula for return on equity the formula would be profit upon equity so if we are uh, talking about equity so the profit would be profit for the year that is it would be the final profit that is after interest profit after interest now we are already being provided with the net profit figure that is 10000 this is the profit that is after interest and what about the owner's equity we have already found the owner's equity and what is the closing value for equity closing capital is 81000 okay so what we need to do we need to divide it the profit for the year with the owner's equity and this is the formula 10000 divided by 81000 time 100 it is 12.35 percent okay return on equity is how much 12.35 percent it is return on equity so the more return on equity or return on owners capital uh, also known as return on shareholder funds it is better for the owners return on equity the more it should be it is better then we have another type of return and this is known as return on capital employed okay one is return on owners capital and one is return on total capital employed now what is the difference between the two uh, return on uh, capital employed capital employed mean owners capital as well as outsiders capital that is loan so in the denominator we would take capital employed capital employed means uh, owners capital plus non-current liability both so what is the profit now uh, my dear students the profit we, that we are going to take would be profit before interest also known as operating profit just remember if we want to take the total capital employed that is owner's capital as well as the bank loan so the profit should also be total that is before interest and uh, this is the only formula uh, in which we would take operating profit that is profit before interest and in all other formulas that, such as profit margin or return on equity we take profit for the year so are we being provided with operating profit no we are just being provided with profit for the year but we are aware that while calculating this net profit we have already deducted how much interest 2000 okay we have already deducted this 2000 interest so what we need to do we need to just add back this 2000 and now the profit before interest would be 12000 now another way to find would be gross profit is there 74000 and we ne just need to deduct the operating cost and not the loan interest if we deduct operating cost 62,000 from the 74,000 gross profit, then we are left with 12,000 that is profit before interest. Okay, profit before interest uh, is the interest uh, in which all of the expenses have been deducted other than interest. Now, the capital employed would be the capital that relates to the owner that is 81,000 and also the bank loan. If we add up both of these capital. Uh, loan and owner's capital uh, this is 101,000 and this would be uh, capital employed okay capital employed would be 101,000 so in capital employed we take owner's capital as well as non-current liability loan there is another way also to calculate the capital employed and another formula to calculate capital employed would be total assets minus current liability okay total assets minus current liability so this is another formula for calculating capital employed if we deduct total assets minus total liability then we can have what owner's capital so uh, we have one more ratio and that is that is receivable turnover receivable days we have already learned it before what is the formula for receivable turnover receivable days formula would be trade receivable upon credit sale into 365 now how much trade receivable do we got trade receivables would be the closing value and we have already found trade receivable uh, already given here in uh, SOFP it is 31,000 and credit sale we would assume that all of the sales is on credit unless traded by the examiner trade receivable is 31,000 and the sales figure that is given in the income statement is 240,000 okay so 31 divided by 240 multiplied by 365 it would be 48 days okay 48 days this means our customers on average take how many days to pay us uh, customers take on average 48 days to pay us okay this is the formula for trade receivable turnover then we have payable turnover it is quite similar the formula would be trade payable upon credit purchase instead of credit sale into 365 trade payable of creditor is already given in the question 
and purchase is already given and purchase is 154,000 and we would assume all of the purchase is on credit unless stated by the examiner and we need to multiply by 365 okay this is 79 days great payable turnover we have one uh, another issue in this question if it's uh, required or not mm, no it's not required and i'm just uh, doing it for the sake of if the examiner asks it is working capital cycle now what is the formula for working capital cycle it would be inventory turnover plus receivable turnover minus payable turnover inventory and receivable are both current assets therefore i am adding up both of these and payable turnover is its uh, liability so therefore i'm detecting it so inventory takes how many days to sell 40 days and receivable takes how many days to recover the investment from the uh, recover the receivable from customers 48 days so on average it is now uh, 88 days first of all it takes 40 days for the inventory to sell then once the inventory sells we sell it on credit and the customers take 48 days so for, for 88 days we need to uh, we need to uh, invest the money in the in the working capital and uh, we take uh, 79 days to pay our suppliers so out of this 88 days working capital requirement basically 79 days is being financed by whom by our supplier so this means only nine days is left so therefore our money is only stuck into the business for nine days so this is basically working capital cycle